We are live. Five thirty. Hey Amen. Five thirty, right? Five thirty ish. Five thirty. <laughs> Most of my followers know I'm known for ish. <laughs> yeah, you know. There's grace. Uh -huh. So, um, so while some people are hopping on, we're going to be talking about kingdom marriages, the purpose, the power in them. And the purity that's required, and that it, and that kingdom marriages build in us, or mm -hmm. form in us rather. And uh, so, while some people are hopping on, I'm going to have James. This is James. You Everyone. guys have probably already met him if you've been following me long. I want you guys to share this. I want you to tag some people. This is going to encourage some people. It's going to open people's eyes. It's going to um, just help people really recognize what God is doing in the earth and how important kingdom marriages are for the expansion of his kingdom, how needed they are, how worth it they are, whatever it costs, um, and whether you are married already, whether you're married to a believer, a non-believer, whether you're waiting to be married, whether you've lost a spouse, it doesn't matter. If you're interested in hearing about kingdom marriages and being helped in whatever phase or stage you're in, I think that we're gonna have something, we're gonna touch on something that's gonna bless you tonight so you guys share this tag some people and james is just gonna pray for a moment as we um, open up you guys while we're praying um, and just as we're talking put questions um you know say hello to us let us know where you're watching from let us know if you're married or you're single or you're waiting we'll be praying for you guys and so james amen well lord i just thank you for this time lord i thank you for placing a guard before my mouth lord I thank you, Lord, that uh, we are going to speak what you would have us speak to your sons and daughters out here uh, on this broadcast, Lord. I just plead the blood of Jesus over me and Emily Rose and over this ministry, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, Lord, too, that it would go forth and carry out and, and speak to those uh, that you would have it speak to, Lord God, and that nothing would hinder or delay it, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for blessing those that are tuning in and uh, that we would uh, be quickened in our spirits to... Uh, speak to those that you would have us speak to and, and give an accurate uh, uh, perception on what your uh, truth is on kingdom marriages and uh, the purpose, purity, and uh, uh, power that is behind it, Lord God. And so I just thank you for um, speaking through us, uh, your humble servants here in this uh, broadcast, Lord. And I thank you that um, we're moving forward into your purpose in, in our lives, Lord. And I thank you... Um, for just continuing to speak to us and use us in this time here on the earth, Lord. And I thank you for uh, continuing to um, bring kingdom marriages into their full uh, fruition and uh, bring them together for your purposes, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that your, uh, your word is so clear on kingdom marriages and, and the purpose of the one flesh coming together, Lord God, and, and to uh, move powerfully in the world, Lord God. And, and so we thank you. Um, for our partners that are out there and uh, our partners that uh, we're currently with as well. So in Jesus' name, we thank you for this broadcast and um, we just turn our mouths over to you, Lord, and that we would speak on your behalf uh, with um, humility and uh, with purpose in Jesus' name. So let me just clarify. <laughs> I almost busted out laughing because you, you said the partners that we're currently with and the ones that are out there. <laughs> yeah. And I know what you're talking about. I'm sure everybody else did too. But just in case, we're only talking about like what, like he was praying for everybody. And the, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I like to, to laugh and be <laughs> with the, the marriage funny. that we currently have and the one that's probably going to be a little bit better in the future. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what he was praying. No, yeah. Uh, our partners that we have in our lives. And so the ones I'm that you might wife, have. Yeah. And, and if you're waiting for your kingdom marriage, so your partner that's out there. Yeah. Absolutely. That is why, man. <laughs> Okay, so I I I want to start off base level saying this is something I say a lot, and you might not have known this a year ago, but I feel like you understand this now. Many of you guys might not know this. Many of you guys already know this. Many of you are in the process of figuring this out. But kingdom marriage, marriage the way God designed it, the main purpose of the marriage is not our happiness. That is more of the after effect. That is more of the um, harvest of the seeds that are sown. Mm -hmm. the, the main purpose of kingdom marriage is the main, same thing as the main purpose of our lives in general, which is to glorify God. Amen. So, first and foremost, I'll say marriage is not just, I used to say marriage is not for our happiness, it's for our holiness. But I'll like reword that so people don't get afraid. 
and say it's not just for our happiness it's for also for our holiness mm -hmm. and um so in saying that i'm just going to briefly we're just going to briefly tell you what our stories is most of you guys who follow me already know mine but i i um was raised a church went out of the church went crazy 24 really came back to the lord and um i mean i had lived wild promiscuous and all of that and um come out of prostitution and i prayed and asked the lord for a husband a godly husband when i was 24 years old so weird i remember where i was in my mom's house laying in bed crying lonely hoping you know wondering if anybody would ever want me if i could ever have a marriage and you know like i wanted this man of god and this is just the because i because i am i laugh a lot and i enjoy myself sometimes we get to see the side of god that we understand <laughs> because of how he's created us and I, I i was praying for this and i kind of felt like i heard the lord chuckle and say to me not condescendingly but just give drop a knowing in me essentially saying okay this person you're praying for you know basically showing me I would not be equally yoked with the kind of person that I wanted mm -hmm. at that time so there was just a recognition that I was nowhere near ready to be with somebody in the state that I was in and I and he just let me know it was going to be a minute mm -hmm. essentially because he was gonna I probably would have ruined it if he had brought somebody that at that time so 16 years later I met my husband and I'm not going to get into to all of that but um, so it, I waited 16 years for my kingdom marriage mm. eight years I did not wait perfectly I struggled internally with lust I struggled with my identity I, last sermon I preached which was Sunday I talk about that struggle so I'm not going to go into that again but then I actually fell one summer into sexual sin and repented I was devastated realized that's not who I was anymore and God picked me up and I waited in purity for the next eight years so um, and then I met my husband and we married within two months and I, I might talk some about the marriage as we go but um, so that's my story and I married somebody who had just come out of a life of pornography addiction mm -hmm. And he stopped all that cold turkey. So the first year and a half of my marriage was me helping him because I had grown mature over the 16 years where I was able to help him. And so when I say God said that to me at the beginning, that doesn't mean God does that the same with everybody. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect before you get married. That's Amen. one of the things I talked about all of these uh, Christian books about marriage out there you might read them and be like well I'll never get married I'm never going to be that perfect to be married and have one of these marriages God can marry you into a kingdom marriage no matter what your level of spiritual maturity if it's your time amen okay so a little bit of your backstory so a little bit about me uh, I'm 30 now and I got married when um, I was 27 I think something like that March, March, March 10, 2017. You're definitely in your 30s. You're yeah. forgetting those numbers. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I've uh, been married uh, three years now. And um, <clears throat> a little bit about my past as far as, I guess, dating and everything like that. Um, I met my wife in uh, 2013. And uh, our relationship started off as a friendship. Uh, but there was just kind of a knowing in, in each other that we just, there's something about each other that we, we enjoyed and everything like that. And um, we ended up, you know, be boyfriend and girlfriend for a long time and I was also raised in the church and then I went to college and you know you get indoctrinated at college and you drink a lot and I guess and do stuff like that so I was doing all that other stuff and but when we got together we always talked about our foundation in the Lord and that was one thing that you know you really didn't find out there in college and especially you know in this day and age you know or in 2013 and she had been raised Catholic correct yeah okay so yes. you both believed in Jesus, yes. but you weren't necessarily disciples of Jesus at that time. No, I was not living out loud for the Lord. I mm -hmm. would definitely say that. Um, um, but he was always still a part of my life mm -hmm. um, as far as like, praying for him or being thankful to him. I've always been very thankful for him, and, and my parents are, are super connected to the Lord. And I think you know their relationship with the Lord has um, allowed me to have like a, a good foundation on my childhood and everything growing up. And you know we got together and we always talked about how if money was no object we would have had the marriage uh need the wedding we would have wanted uh right away if we could have but we wanted to save up and have the wedding we wanted but 
And that's um, kind of how the world usually does it. Like, yeah, but the we, wedding's more important than the, <laughs> than the covenant. Yeah. Um, and you know, so um, we, uh, you know, we we did the wrong thing and we moved in together and, you know, engaged in sexual sin and everything. Uh, but we always stayed faithful to each other. Um, and you know, we got married and. Um, throughout our marriage uh, we did, we started going further and further away from the Lord and I think I kind of led us down that path um, in my career um, I never really had Sundays off and Sundays when you go to church and what we wanted to go when we were in Oklahoma City we had a really good time going to churches and we were getting involved with a church that was uh, more like my style of church that I went I grew up in which was you know they had like the band up there and uh, good messages and good words of faith and everything like that. And she grew up in the Catholic Church, but she enjoyed uh, a lot of the the style of the church that I grew up in. So we were doing stuff like that, and then we moved to Virginia. Never really found a church, and we went to a couple times, and, and then we moved to Arlington, and there was just one church down there that was kind of uh, dead and dark, dry religion. Now that I look back on it, um, but um, we kind of came into covenant with some. Uh, uh, destruction of marriage is the way the Bible talks about it, which is between a man and a woman. And on that night, when we went there and celebrated uh, the destruction of God ordained marriage um, uh, with the pastor, too, and believe it or not, in the Methodist church, was the one that was getting married to another woman, and they were both women. And uh, when we came into covenant with that, that same night, my marriage went down, uh, it went down the tubes uh, for now, but God's, <laughs> God's bigger. And, We'll see where that where we go from there. Yeah. So the cool thing is, we both have a very faith story, and I think while we've connected and why God's connected us to a large degree in this season of your life is because I have I have very strongly believed the Lord God for marriage restoration, for marriage miracles, and I've stood and waited and for long periods of time, mm -hmm. and God knew you needed somebody around you at this time. Been there, done that, yeah. walked it, yeah. <laughs> got the shirt, may have burned it, then pulled it back out. I, like, I should probably keep this. <laughs> but so, no matter what it is, when it comes to your marriage, whether you're waiting on a marriage, whether you are in a marriage and you're waiting for a spouse to come along, whether your spouse is waiting for you to come along, whether you're struggling in a kingdom marriage where you're both trying to walk with the Lord, whatever it is, here's what I want to say and prophesy over you and myself and you all is that 2021 is a year that God is moving in the church to bring unity in marriages, to bring unity in home, to pour out his spirit and to break strongholds, mental, emotional, spiritual, Amen. and physical strongholds off of the lives of people so that they can enter into these covenant marriages or be in the marriages that they're in and the marriage be transformed by the power of God through the blood of Jesus to become what he had in mind when marriages were created. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one of the reasons why it is so important because Satan hates marriage. He hates families. Mm -hmm. He hates people. He hates he hates new children being born into the earth. We see the destruction of human life, the destruction of marriage, the destruction of human sexuality, the destruction of the marriage relationship, the home. And, you know, in the church, in the past, you know, you've had a lot of people saying, okay, the marriage unit, but, you know, we're, we're just going to go clomping along and just believe in the marriage at all costs. And there's been turmoil in the homes and nobody's been walking in power, walking in the spirit. People are staying in these abusive, horrible relationships. Right. Nothing's changing. The kids are a mess. The kids are growing up and, and living in the world. Like, that is not what God had in mind. That's why I say parriage, power, is one of the things that God is infusing into kingdom marriages. And as I prophesy this, we need to have, like, the faith rise up in us. This says, I heard what God has said. I will speak what God has said. I will have a kingdom marriage. I will not settle for less. And when you speak that and when you believe it, you got to be prepared to battle for it. you got to be prepared to stand for it. You've got to be prepared to not pay attention to what is happening in the natural and say, I know what my God is doing for me. Mm -hmm. It's not just for my marriage. It's not just for me. It's for the kingdom purpose mm -hmm. of spreading his kingdom throughout the earth. And, and the world needs to see what it looks like between a man and a woman 
submitted to one another in love with Christ as the head and the husband as the leader. And when I say leader, we're not going to get into all that, but I'm, it's, it's, it is not like some people in the church where he's lording over his wife, but he is protecting her. You want to talk into that a minute? I'm sure you've been studying like yeah. what your part needs to be. In Absolutely. And I, I did not walk in that, you know, uh, for sure. You know, it says husbands, uh, love your wife as you love yourself. And in that time in my life, I wasn't loving myself. I was, you know, drinking um, and hurting my body and then also getting fat and then being disgusted at what I saw in the mirror to the point of where I almost was starting to hate what, like, what I looked like and everything like that. And if you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else that the Lord has trusted you with? And, you know, that was a real hurtful thing coming out of all that. And to look back and be like, well, I didn't love myself. How could I have loved someone else the way that God wants me to love someone else um, and the way that they deserve to be loved and you know that was a real a real tough pill to swallow um, but thank God he gave me the grace to be able to swallow it and learn from it and be able to pick myself up off the ground and move forward in, in you know healing myself so that uh, my marriage can be healed and um, absolutely it's definitely not about lording over um, you know wife submit to your husband it's not like oh you know you do, do what I things. want you to do. It's like as unto the Lord, because mm -hmm. if you are loving your wife, if you are putting her needs first, if you are, it says love your wives like life, uh, Christ loved the church. If you are sacrificing your own mm -hmm. life for her yeah. betterment and her Absolutely. better good, to me, that's easy. That means when a decision comes that has to be made and you can't come into agreement about it, at some point, somebody has to have the final word. This is about unity. This isn't about the man has to be the one to do the checkbook. This doesn't, it's not about some traditional way of looking at it, but it, it, it has, it has to do with authority. Mm -hmm. And in that authority, he also has a responsibility to be Absolutely. praying, to be covering. Mm -hmm. And this is something I have seen James do over the last year because he's been separated from his wife for the last year. And he's been praying for her. He has been fasting for her. He has been warring for her. And in this, because he is following the Spirit, and whether you're a woman or a man, in a marriage, out of marriage, wait for a marriage, as you are trying to stay within the will of God for your life, and you have a kingdom marriage promise in your heart, you are going to have to stand through some seasons. You're going to have to wade through some muck and mire, and you are going to have to sacrifice yourself. And a lot of yeah. people want the kingdom marriage, and they think that it's going to be like, Easy peasy, no struggle. I mean, unless you've already died to yourself and you marry somebody who's already died to themselves to a huge degree and then you guys get married at that time after you've already spiritually died to yourself to the point where you it's just Christ living through you all the time, you're going to struggle. They were probably 85 too. So. <laughs> um, you, know, you get to that point. No, I'm just kidding. But absolutely, um, it, it's, it's very important to really consider others as better than yourself too, especially in that same sense where you were talking about um, you know, wives submitting to your husband, but also Jesus died for us, and we're supposed to emulate Christ as men in, in the marriage. Um, and He died for us, so he definitely gave his life up for for us, as, and so we should do that as men um, for for our women. And, you know, I think as, as the two, as the Bible says, you know, a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become one flesh. You know, if, if you are a woman, like, believing and standing in the gap against all odds and, and for your biblical marriage to come to be restored, you know, you have authority in the Spirit then because you are connected to God the mm -hmm. Father. And through the Spirit, you know, you can continue to stand. It's not to say, like, oh, the man has the authority and he's walking away. Like, no, not at all. Like, you are connected to the Spirit. You are yoked to Jesus, and he is at the center of your life. And I think having Jesus at the center of your marriage is a, is a huge thing, and my father-in-law, like, you know, told me, he's like, you know, no matter what goes on in life, just put Jesus first, put Jesus in the center of your marriage, and, like, everything, you'll be able to stand the test, you'll be able to stand through it all, and I certainly didn't do that in the beginning, and, you know, when I've had to go through this hard year of, you know, of a continual come-to-Jesus moments, uh, but I just have my parents to thank for foundation in the beginning with the, with the Spirit and with Jesus uh, on my life, and when I hit rock bottom, um, Jesus was there with me every step of the way, and He's been there building me back, putting the shattered pieces of of who I was and, and what I thought I was, and and being like, no, you're my son. No, you're my son, and just put it piecing me back together so that uh, when my marriage comes back together, um, I'll be able to. 
to love her the way that God has loved me throughout this time with the true agape love of the Father, which is, I don't care what happens, I love you. Like, well, well, I love you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like you were saying before, you couldn't love her before because you weren't taking the time to receive the love of God for yourself. Yep. So you were kind of running from the love of God. And, and so we got to stop, no matter where we are, running from the love of God. And we got to stop looking to that person, whether we're with them, whether we're longing to be with them. We got to stop thinking in our mind that the kingdom marriage is the goal. The kingdom marriage is just one of the means by which God glorifies himself in the earth and glorifies himself in our lives and through our marriages. But that person is only going to reflect God's love imperfectly even even if we love well we're learning how to receive the love of God well we're not going to do it perfectly mm -mm. I mean my husband and I had a conversation and this was huge at the beginning of our marriage but he had another epiphany I knew that he worshiped me you know he and, and that that's going to happen sometimes when somebody's not as spiritually mature but if you are the more mature, spiritually mature person you need to be careful not to take that for yourself you need to be careful to be directing that to God and, mm -hmm. and being like don't be, because if you don't it's like a codependency mm -hmm. so they like uh, you know you come into a marriage let's say somebody's struggling with depression somebody's got alcoholism whatever it is you cannot save them you cannot be their savior and sometimes you have to do things just like God does with us that it feels like you're hurt they might not understand it or perceive it as love mm -hmm. you know and so it's really, really important if you are the more spiritually pers spiritually mature person to be discerning and handling your spouse. I mean, there was many, many times that I pulled back and you know took some time to myself, went to my mom's or something like that at the beginning of the marriage, and uh, just gave God some space with my husband. And that wasn't always easy. I did it with his permission. He didn't really like it. You would have rather me been home, but you know whatever it is that God's telling you to do. I mean, he told me recently, he said, I think I realized, because he kind of came up against a stronghold, he said, I think I realized what it is. I I, I think I, I still idolize you, you know? And here's the thing. You might have somebody, if you're single, let me just give you this nugget. You might have somebody that idolizes you, and if you don't have discernment, and you aren't getting what you need from the Father, you might look at that and be like oh he wants me so much he's so into me or whatever it's your spouse so you just kind of bask in that and you take something that's not meant for you mm -hmm. it's meant God is the God God is a jealous God so we've got to lead our husbands lead our wives back to God and say whatever is good in me towards you it's all from him you know and just continue to direct their admiration or whatever back to God because it will backfire if somebody has you on a pedestal that that's not actually true agape love mm -hmm. and so it's um, it's a counterfeit so I think we have to be careful not to receive that to ourselves, and we got to be careful not to, to um, idolize the person who we are with our spouse or whatever yeah it's a it's a common trap too because in the in the world and the way that Hollywood treats love, you know, it's it's always about you know loving each other and then you know going into happily ever after, um, and you know you really have to. Catherine Coleman said it really well. You know, when, when she would receive the, these people that would come and tell her like you know you you changed my life, you did all these things and all that other stuff. Catherine Coleman would like kind of box all these compliments up that people had given to her, and just offer them up to the Lord. I believe she would see them as a bouquet of roses, and she would offer them up to the Lord and be like, "These are yours." Like. I'm only doing this because of what you've led and what you've given to me. And I think, you know, um, if both partners are receiving their love from a father and loving each other through that love, it can just be this like synergistic love that is just full of, of God. And God is good and God is love. And you can really just enjoy each other and enjoy God together. And, and what a magnificent thing that is. Like you guys have dreams together and they really dream in tandem and they'll get, each get a piece and, and that'll be their next phase and what the ministry may be doing or, uh -huh. or how to deal with something that's going on and that, isn't that that's just God right there that's so beautiful but you know a lot of people can see where you're at in your marriage and the happiness that you're experiencing and not know 
you know, just see that on the surface and not know 16 years of, of waiting, mm -hmm. or in my case, you know, a year of standing when the, the world and people are screaming at me that um, God's not going to come through for my marriage. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to fight the women off him with this stick. I always say that. <laughs> He's like, what? There's other women in the world? <laughs> like, but it, you know, but that's that's God though, because God is is uh, is God, and when He says something, and when He continues to confirm it, even when in my own imperfect flesh starts to maybe believe the world and believe what I'm seeing in the natural, God will just give me another dream, and that's I'm so thankful to God for that. And be receptive to your dreams. Like uh, if you, if you believe you may be encountering your kingdom marriage or your kingdom partner, or if you're if you're standing in the gap like me. Or if you're just going through life uh, with your partner and, and you want more for your marriage and everything, uh, keep in contact with your dreams and put them before the Lord because he'll always confirm it in his word and he'll always confirm it um, in multiple ways too about what he's really showing you in your dreams. And I, that's one way God really speaks to me is through my dreams and I'm so thankful for them. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've counseled people who God has shown them things that's going on with their spouse that they needed to know that wasn't revealed in the natural yeah. <laughs> and so you know it can help you understand where they're coming from it can help you understand how to pray now if you're single I, I, and, I, and I have to say this when talking about dream dreams can also be our hopes and fears mm. so a lot of times I have seen a single person dream about a particular guy or girl at their church and believe these are prophetic dreams these are God dreams this is the person I'm supposed to be with and you have to be very careful with that because dreams are often hopes and they are often symbolic. So you might see somebody at church as a single person and they embody what it is that you're praying for. Mm. And so God might be giving you a dream and that person is showing up and it's not necessarily about that person. God's just trying to give you hope. And if you aren't careful, you can end up making a soul tie. I, I really advise against uh, um, deciding whether somebody's for you like that you're if you're not married to somebody if you just start dreaming about a person just be aware not to make soul ties with somebody you're not married to because that's not biblical listen to her don't listen to me but, <laughs> but, you know, um, like I said though just definitely take it it's a different the situation Lord, yeah. it's a yeah. different situation because y'all really are married, married yeah, yeah, and right. y'all are one flesh mm -hmm. and God is like he is encouraging your faith and you're seeing things because you have a God soul tie. That is a legal soul tie. If you if you allow yourself to be tied to somebody you're not married to, that is actually kind of an illegal soul tie. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you have to be careful. Don't give your heart away until, you know, the person has asked for it for starters. You yeah. know, but you guys had a, a marriage. You were married, so. Still are. Yeah. Yeah, but absolutely, yeah, so. And always put it before the Lord and, and, and check in His Word, too. Um because he'll never go against his word. Mm -hmm. So the faith thing. So huge. Um, how many of you guys, just by, sh by saying, you know, a comment or whatever, how many of you all are focusing on what's wrong in your relationship? Focusing on what's wrong with the person? Focusing on what you want to see being different? And how many of you all have understood, comprehended how important it is to see the person as God sees them? This is something we do for each other as, as spouses. It is, these are prophetic kingdom marriages in this time that God's bringing up. Meaning, we have got to look at the person and not see the depression, not see the struggle, not see you know, where they're, they're weaker or where they're falling short. Not that we don't see that and, you know, try to help them in any way that we can, but we need to see and call forth and call out what God sees. That's so important. Amen. So important. Yeah, because if you continually speak word curses over people and over your own spouse, over and who's your one flesh, um, I mean, that's not going to end well for either of you. But if you, if you continually see what God sees in them and allow him to open your eyes to to see them as who they are supposed to be you can start to call out that goodness and then you're in turn blessing them and as they continue to get blessed you know you'll be pulling them out of depression you'll be pulling them out of whatever that the enemy has them in bondage and breaking down those strongholds in the spirit and you know god has given us all authority in the spirit and we as we exercise that authority that he's given to us he continues to give us more and when we're faithful and little he is faithful and just to give us responsibility over more and i think that that's super important for um really understanding like you know 
we want to build each other up and we want to continue to walk in the way that God sees each other and when we're doing that it allows us to love each other better too you know you, you don't see the flaw you don't see any aging you don't see anything else that's going on in the physical because you're so in tune with the spirit that that's who you see that's what you see you just see their spirit the being that that is the true version of themselves inside there mm -hmm. that's good and I know for women what men really need is they need us to believe in them I mean they need us to believe in them and so when you when you have been hurt by somebody they have done wrong if they have repented if they've done everything they can to change like you have to find forgiveness because if if their success is intricately connected to your success in a marriage so if you were trying to lash out trying to get somebody back you know you you haven't forgive you you know you aren't allowing that thing to and here's why kingdom marriages are so great let me back step and say unlike worldly marriages in the kingdom the pain that we go through the hard things that happen even when we have been hurt if we turn them over to the Lord and we're being led by the Spirit God can take the very thing that the enemy meant for our harm and turn it for good Amen. and I've seen God do this in my marriage with my husband God will remind me of things he'll just encourage me about him I mean, I, I know when I, you know, I was wanting to have a child because my husband had been abused in his childhood and, and, and had been in um, foster care and had had sexual abuse and all this stuff. He had a fear of being a parent. But I knew that I married the person that God had me marry. And so, like, he would have dreams of being afraid. And I just was like, look, honey, I know what God told me about you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. Amen. And I remember it, it, he was a little bit afraid of hurting her, even as a little child, you know, mm -hmm. like an infant. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some men are a little bit yeah. nervous about babies anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really hold any babies until I became, uh, you know, when I had my, my, my nephew, you know. So, like, I was like, there you go. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> but I remember he had an epiphany mm -hmm. very early on, like in her first year. And he's like, I am never going to hurt her. Yeah, it's your daughter. Yeah. yeah. And, like... I believed that before he even believed it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to pick each other up and believe in each other even when that person doesn't believe. Because when a person doesn't believe, their actions are going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. And so when we begin to believe, this is this is why the relationship with God is so important. Because you can't do that without God. you got to hear what God is saying about that person. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to your family. Don't listen to your friend. Don't listen. You've got to hear what God is saying about your marriage. You've got to hear what God is saying about your spouse. You have got to hear from God and step out on faith, believing what the Lord has spoken about it. Absolutely. Because any marriage, you can have fear. This is good. this person's hurt me. They're going to hurt me again. I'm not doing this. They're going to hurt me again. But if you take some time with the Lord and you really hear what He's saying to you, then you you can believe in that person. And I don't care if that person has never hurt you. If you don't, if you just married somebody and you don't know in your heart, this is God. I have faith about this. That deep abiding gift of faith. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be talking about this tonight. But there's like a faith that is grown through time and experience, and then there is a gift of faith. And that gift of faith, it's not faith that you muster up within yourself. It's the faith of God. That he drops within you. And this Amen. is the faith that James has for his marriage and why he has been able to stand against everything that speaks otherwise that it's not going to be. Mm -hmm. And this is why, this is what has helped me stand through some hard times and wait on the Lord. Say, I know what God has spoken to me and I'm not going to settle for anything less. Amen. I'm not going to settle. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care how many times I have to forgive. I don't care how my ego is hurt. I don't care what friends I lose. I don't care if my family gets it or doesn't get it. I'm going to go with what the Lord has said and I am going all in with God. And it's really a test of faith and there is a scripture about it. You know, um, whoever doesn't hate their father, mother, brother, sister um, can't be my disciple. And what does that mean? When your family, when your group of friends, when your you know, whoever it is, when your own doubts and unbelief is warring against what God, what Jesus is saying, I want you to come with me. I'm going to make this okay. I'm going to work this out for your good. You guys are going to do amazing things for the kingdom. 
It's like, oh no, you know, I've been hurt before, and, and my mom says this, my best friend says that, and you know, and then you're gonna just have, you're gonna be tore up. You're not gonna be united with God and yourself because Jesus is saying, this is what I have for you, and you gotta go on with the Lord. And I highly, highly advise, if you are having problems in your marriage, don't talk to people about it. Mm. Don't talk to people about your spouse. This is the most counterproductive thing you can do. I'm not saying you never need counseling, because sometimes you do. Yeah. But but if you're believing for your marriage, and you go and say, he did this, he did this, and, da -da, da -da, da -da, and then those people now see your spouse as a jerk, <laughs> and then he you're wanting him to change, and he let's say he does change, they still see him as a jerk. And you have ruined his reputation. And it is just counterproductive. And I'm, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, um, but it's just really wise to keep silent when you're having problems in your marriage unless you are to the point where you really you need to get you know get out and get some help where it's it, you know that happens sometimes you have mm -hmm. to pull back and really find out what God's wanting you to do yeah and I think that's where really submitting to the godly authority that God has placed in your life uh, really comes into um, you know when you have troubles in your marriage you can go to your pastor you can go to you know a Christian therapist you can go to places like that but don't forget you know, James 1 5 says, if you, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord for it. He won't scoff at you. He won't scorn you for asking for it. In fact, he'll just give it to you. And mm -hmm. he'll be like, thanks for having the faith that you can hear from me. And here's some more. Here's some new stuff. Here's some stuff I got. And he'll, he'll drop, ex like, seeing your partner or he'll, um, in the way that he sees them. Or he'll give you peace about um, making certain decisions about where to go forward and everything like that. And I think that it's a really important thing to remember that, you know, um, he, he's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he'll show up and, and show off for you when you just place it before him, when you really trust him with the process, when you really trust him with doing the things that he said he's going to do. And you just say, all right, Lord, uh, well, if you're a promise maker, then you're also the promise keeper. And I'll just believe in you. And when you tell me to do something, I'll do it the first time without complaining or grumbling or without delaying. And without, yes. And I'll just believe that you're going to show up mm -hmm. and, and show off for me, too. And so, I mean, I'm, that's what I believe in. And I know that um, he's, he's going to do what he said. Why, why wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. And for single people that are still waiting for their spouse, I know in my long wait, um, there is more than one way to wait. And, and waiting isn't, isn't just doing what you have to do because you have no choice but to wait and you're just kind of doing what you want but in that time if you are standing in faith and walking in faith about it you know be following the lord and having your having your life purified and and waiting on god don't just needlessly be dating different people and, and people you know whatever god's leading you to do he might be leading you to you know have a you know a christian site where you're dating people that you might meet your spouse that way so you have to be led by the spirit with that i'm not boxing god but I'm saying don't just in your flesh be out dating this person and dating that person. Make sure you're in position wherever God wants you to be. Because that's where you're going to meet the person. Is when you're step in step with God, that's when you're going to meet the person where he has you. Mm -hmm. I think in your time of waiting, uh, what I've learned in my time of waiting, even though I am married, uh, just loving the Lord. And he'll love you back. He'll love you better. He'll love you amazingly. And... You know, at in times when I was in like a deep dark pit of despair, you know, I just asked the Lord. I was like, I need you to hold me. <laughs> I, I need it. Like, uh, I'm looking for that human touch and, and things I've gotten used to in my marriage and stuff like that. And I just needed, I needed to feel like someone loved me. And He showed up and He gave me a hug. And you, know, you could feel that, you know. And, and then you have, I would have dreams of of God showing up for me and, and doing things like that. And, you know, in that time, you learn to love the Lord that way when things do come against you, when your imperfect self and your imperfect spouse butt heads or, or don't agree on things you know, like that, you can always understand, like, thank God the Lord is the love of my life, and I can love this person and myself in our imperfectness as we continue to see God and, and what He has for us throughout life. and. I know that's something you did in, in your years of waiting where you just learned to just love the Lord and, and allow Him to love you. And that just really allowed you to pour out uh, for Dave in the way that you did. And I know that's why he's tarrying now, too. Um, you know, free will's involved as well, too. And 
But I just know that that's who he is. And, and in, this, in your time of waiting, when you're seeking the Lord, to seek him and he'll love you and he'll really he'll bring you up to where he wants you to be and then you'll be able to step into that moment when he's ready for you to step into that moment i mean i i there's a scripture that says that we're joint partakers in the grace of god so i mean just recognizing we're sinners saved by grace our spouse is a sinner saved by grace and and not to have pride pride can ruin a relationship and that other person might owe you but the Lord's vengeance is mine. We're not to take vengeance and we're not to decide how long we need to punish them for what they've done wrong. We need to let the Lord deal with that. Mm -hmm. now, now, granted, you have to have boundaries. If, somebody, if you're in a dangerous situation where there's been constant abuse or somebody's cheating on you all the time, you have to have wisdom. I mean, you know, don't be discerning and be led by the Spirit. But, I mean, if it's just... You know something that's happened the, the person who's repented turned from it or even if they just have a bad attitude something about that the, something they're struggling with they're not loving you like they should you have got to ask God to meet your needs mm -hmm. just like you're learning to do that in your singleness it's gonna benefit you so much when you guys get back together Amen. because she's not always gonna she's not always gonna be there for you the way that you have had Jesus there for you because mm -hmm. he will never leave us you talked, to, you talked about Catherine Coleman, mm -hmm. and I feel that way too. Somebody had actually sent me a dream today, and I read it, and they were telling how, you know, they had a dream about me, and I came to them, and I just, all this love, all this stuff is right. Like, my thought was, that wasn't me. That was Jesus. I need to write her, but I just haven't had time. That was Jesus, something he had spoken to me or shown her through me, watching me, listening to me, something that I imparted to her. That wasn't me. That was Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, I, it's just, you know, it came in her dream as me. But I don't think it was actually me. Yeah. And it's the same with our, with, you know, from the, the we give God the glory for whatever good that comes from us. Because we know it is from Him. And then we learn to receive it from ourselves. And when we do that, then then the when we our spouse doesn't see us like we want them to. You know, because a lot of times your spouse has been hurt. Mm -hmm. or something like that and so you have to know who you are because if they're responding to you out of not seeing you properly it can be hurtful especially if it's that person that's yeah, close it, to you you could be imperfect too yeah. yeah like we're all human we're all continue to, to fall short of the glory of god but thank god that he saved us and he he took the cross because of the glory he set before him and each and every one of us are we're that glory set before him and when you can remember that and when you do sin or, or when your partner sins against you and stuff like that, you can really just understand like, all right, Lord, what are we going to do about this? And he'll lead you and he'll guide you for sure. In individual ways. Mm -hmm. And I am somebody who is very, very strong in my faith about my marriage. And so when I have been hurt and it's been many, many times because my husband was get, as he's been getting his mind renewed and just things from his past and all the stuff. You know, and I'm sensitive, and I just, I've hurt not nearly as much recently. I, I mean, not hardly at all recently, but I mean, I've had times when there was just so much pain, and I just felt, you know, I would not despair. I just knew not to despair, and I knew and believed wholehearted me in my mind that God was good, and He was going to come through, and that faith moves people. Mm -hmm. It moves situations. It turns I mean, if that person doesn't have faith enough to believe that, you know, God loves them, that God has good things for them, they need your faith to hold them up until they um, can get that faith themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. And I think um, it really just stems back to your relationship with the Lord, for sure. 100%. Does anybody have any questions? Um I don't have a way to look back at questions that have already been answered. Still have to be re-asked. <clears throat> we can transition to like power okay. of the kingdom yeah. of marriage. Um, the Bible says, you know, to go out two by two. And initially, when the disciples went out, uh, they went out two by two, or, or they uh, they brought new disciples underneath them when they went out and stuff like that. And I think that is such a good thing in in a marriage because you have like you know you're two people but one flesh and, with, and jesus is in the center you know a three strand cord is, is yes. unbreakable 
And when, when you really go out into the world, I mean, that's why the, the enemy has fought so hard to destroy the sanctity of marriage, mm-hmm. to make it easy to divorce or whatever. Yes. Like that. Everyone just gets divorces and Christians like divorce the deal. same rate at the same rate as, as the world does. And like, well, I mean, what does the Bible say about divorce? And it's and Jesus said uh, when the Pharisees were attacking him, like, ooh, what does the, what does the God think about divorce? He's like, well, because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce. Mm-hmm. But he quoted Genesis, like, the man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall be one flesh. And how could you divide your one flesh without killing yourself? How could you do that? Mm-hmm. You can't. And so that's where Jesus is saying, you know, like, love your neighbor as yourself and love your spouse as yourself because they really are your one flesh. And, and I think that's important. And, you know, you know, it says, like, one can put to flight 1,000 and two can put to flight 10,000. And that's not times two. That's times 10. You know, it's a, to the factor of 10. And, you know, that's uh, it's important to understand that that's why the enemy has come against marriages and, and things so hard. And, you know, one thing that you, if you are coming under fire in your marriage or anything like that, one thing that's in, um empowered me in this time is that the, the the stark opposition that I've faced in this year just screams the amount of blessing that the Lord is just getting ready to un- unleash and you know you can really tell like um, that the anointing on your life by the opposition that the enemy really tries to throw at you and and you know when you have multiple people of different streams that have no nothing to do with each other besides their common hatred for one person you know you can really see the enemy at, at work in that situation and I think it's um, I think it's just in, in it's a, it's a good thing when the Lord is, is involved, you know, and I believe that um, you can really trust that your kingdom marriage w- will put the flight 10,000 and more when you're walking in that power and, and doing all these things. Yeah, I mean, God did not even release me into full-time ministry until I was married. Hmm. I married in um, August, and I went, I, I went into full-time ministry in December. Wow. Yeah. Like, I needed to be married in order for to be ready for that. Wow. And you said you got married uh, two months after meeting, so like six months. We met in yeah. June. Yeah. I married him in August, and then in December. Like four months later. Yeah. Full-time ministry. Oh, that's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many blessings that are released over marriages. There's, it is exponential power. And I'm not saying that you can't be single in the earth but the kingdom marriages are for reproduction producing kingdom children raising them up in kingdom power purity and purpose Mm -hmm. and for ministry purposes in the earth and and it doesn't have to be like full-time ministry it can be whatever god's calling you to do to the business world to the to the government world you know i have all kinds of places people are being sent out two by two and there's so and and there's a protection there even in the marriage bed you know when you have that person mm-hmm. you know it, it, it's it's a type of protection from other people coming at you <laughs> you know it's a covering mm-hmm. especially i think for me being a woman in ministry god really needed me to be covered in that way absolutely and that not to use like uh, I guess influence in, in in a ministry setting to for personal gain and that's really good but again you know, it's putting all that stuff back on the Lord when people are, are blessing you and everything like that too I think it's in super powerful. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I cannot stress enough about those kingdom children. I mean, Satan is after our children. And I know the world has minimized, and if you've been divorced, this isn't condemnation. I raised a child by myself. He's still got huge purpose. He's walking in his purpose. He's coming into his uh, power. He's coming into his purity. He's 24. I did that by myself. And so you don't have to have never been through divorce. It's not condemnation. But if you are married and the enemy's trying to ruin your marriage, you need to understand that divorce is not easy for a child and it has long term effects and some kids really really struggle to get over it and it affects their future marriages it's like unless you know i mean sometimes it has to happen but you want to fight for your marriage you want to fight for the children that you have you want to fight for the children that god's designed for you to have i mean i saw my daughter and my son who i haven't had yet um in 2008, I started dreaming about them. Mm-hmm. Those children exist in God's heart already. You yeah, know? there's spirits there already. Yeah. yeah. I think it's good, you know, and, you know, no matter what's happened in your life, he's the restorer. He's the redeemer. He, you went 
to the cross for us and was uh, resurrected. The other are, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you know, so whatever goes on in your life, whatever you believe can has died or anything like that, just trust the Lord and He'll resurrect things. Um, and that that may not be resurrecting things with, with the same person. Um, you know, if if you know that maybe something else has happened or anything like that. You know. But uh, the Lord will, will answer those prayers, and, and He's the Redeemer and the Restorer, and just trust Him to come through for you, and I mean, He will. He loves that. I mean, He's glorified by, by showing off and, 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 and pouring out His glory onto His glory carriers here on the earth. And, you know, it doesn't bring Him any glory to have people, um, you know, get divorced and, and, and be in, in the dirt and the mire and the muck and, you know, broke and poor, you know? But God gets all the glory when His followers, people who trust in Him with their life and everything like that, and he lifts them up and brings them forward into their destiny and changes the world. And that brings God all the glory in the world. And nothing, nothing lifts up a smile on his face like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, I'll, and I'll say this. You might be in a situation where your spouse has cheated on you. They have left you. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have stood. They married somebody else. They live with somebody else. You know, there's a time for release. <laughs> and you need to be aware of when that season comes. Because I have talked to far too many people who have missed that they have been released from something when God has released them. That, that you know, if your spouse is married to somebody else, if they have kids with somebody else, it's time to move on. I mean, there's a time mm-hmm. to hold on and there's a time to let go. And Christians need to wake up because I know a lot of sweet, godly people, that they're, they're depressed. They have just come under so much pressure because they believe in their dear, godly hearts that God is forcing them to wait or even calling them to and they believe they're serving the Lord and waiting on somebody who is not coming back and there does come a time when you have to let them go I mean if they divorce you and they move on with somebody else you have got to understand and this is where I think people mess up they have heard from God they have believed from God they have stood they have declared they have decreed but there is a free will And if that person, God will work with them and work with them and give them opportunity. If they're so foolish that they don't see what God is trying to give them, there will come a time when God will release the believer. And the believer will go on with the Lord and God will answer every desire of their heart. And you might not be able to hear that now if you, you know... That's a hard thing. Yeah, he doesn't want to hear it when I tell him, no matter what, you're going to be fine. <laughs> He's like, no, nope, I'm not going. I'm no, like, I don't try to put that off on no, him yeah, because yeah. we're standing, mm-hmm. and I believe that wholeheartedly. But there does come a time if somebody moves on with somebody else and they're not coming back that God isn't, you don't get depressed and don't feel like God has let you down. Everything he's promised, everything he's spoken, everything he has shown you, he And this is where idolatry cannot come in. There's not one person in this world who your destiny is so tied to that if they choose to walk away from God and walk away from you and never come back, that your promises won't come to pass because God will find somebody Mm -hmm. who is going to listen to them. God will find somebody who is going to be a vessel to love you and to, to walk with you. He will do it. Amen. He will. And I think, you know, knowing when you're released also comes back to his word. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if something happened in your marriage and there wasn't even biblical grounds for divorce in the first place, I mean, you're not released. You're not released until there's been adultery because that's the biblical grounds for mm-hmm. divorce. Mm-hmm. And you, it coming back to... to you might be released to stay away if the person's, you know, hurting you on a regular yeah. basis. But. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And that there comes a time in the season for, for... But true repentance has to, right. has to be there for the safety and, and, and security right. and, and uh, the sanctity of the marriage bed and, and the marriage in of itself, of course, 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, you do have to, to go back to his word and find out, you know, Lord, what are you saying about this in your word? And, you know, don't be afraid about what it says. Just just trust. I mean, their promises, their declarations, their, 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 you know, they're your inheritance, this thing here. And when, when you go and you read it and you find it, and you can stand on things and, and he'll meet you there and, with that faith. And, you know, it's important to just know, like... Um, when when he get, when you are released when when he says to release things and of course he'll confirm it to you in other ways I mean there's been multiple stories of uh, you know cheating in the church and and pastors yeah and past, like there's one man that who uh, his wife cheated on him it, it hurt him so much he was a pastor and everything like that and God says if you divorce your wife I'll bless you if you take your wife back I'll bless you even more. And that's who he is. He he, he mm-hmm. forgave us when we made our mistakes, when when we do when we sin and everything like that, you know. And when he leads you 
to forgive and to and to take people back and stuff like that it is for your good and yes. i know that it, it, it's so hard and to think that about the pain and everything that's happened but you know you just cast your cares upon the lord and allow him to bear all that weight and you just cling to him as you love on him so much you just cling to him and he's carrying all of it he's carrying you too and in his full love and you can really just move forward in and what he has for you and what he shows you and not caring about what the world and what the natural says because everything in the natural is subject to change because this world that we live in is a type and shadow of the spirit world that is the real world that's where we all came from in in the father's heart is our spirits when we took our mantles and we said yes father i'll go to the earth and i'll do this for you and you know that is where we come from that's what this world is a type and shadow of so it's all subject to change when he one look one word all subject to change under under his power and authority. So, and I think that's one thing to remember. Mm-hmm. That's good. So I'm gonna pray over over our just pray over everybody and our marriages. Amen. Do you have anything else you want to say? I'm good. Okay. Lord God, we just thank you that you are at work in our lives. You are at work in our marriages. You are at work in our families you have a good plan for us lord we want to know you we want to be united with you and your purpose for our lives we want the best that you have for us we want to trust you more we ask god that you would give us the faith that we need to stand on your promises the wisdom that we need to make the right decisions the courage that we need to say no to the things that lead us away from your will and your plan and your heart Lord, I pray that you would break every ungodly soul tie that would hold us back. Lord God, that you would unite us with your spirit and and that you would unite us with our spouses. And anything that has come between our spouses and us, we just plead the blood of Jesus. We put the cross of Christ between anything that would come between us. Lord God, we ask for restoration. We speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak purity in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the sins that we have committed and the sins that have been committed against us. Lord God, we put the blood, the blood of Jesus that washes away the sin of the world, the blood of Jesus. He died for the sins of the whole world, Lord. And we walk in righteousness. We seek after righteousness. We are longing for the fulfillment of the promises that you have given us, Lord. We long to be close to you. We long to see your face. We want to see our spouse the way you see our spouse. We want to speak to our spouse the way you would have us speak to our spouse. We want to respond and love the way you would respond and love. Lord God, we want to be more like Jesus. Lord, help us to forgive us of our selfishness forgive us of our pride forgive us of our fear forgive us of our unforgiveness lord and cleanse us from all unrighteousness god help us to humble ourselves and help our spouses to humble themselves under your mighty hand no one in due season you'll lift us up we have a common enemy our spouse is not the enemy our enemy is satan and his and his uh, hordes of demons that want to destroy us, want to destroy our families, want to destroy our, our spouses, want to destroy the good future that you have for us, wants to hold us back so that we aren't out there reaping the harvest around the world of people who need to see you. Help us, God. 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 We need your help. We need your healing. We need your power purify us purify our hearts purify our hands purify our lips and i ask for great courage because it's going to take courage for many of you guys to walk this out Mm -hmm. i pray for courage boldness Mm -hmm. and as james was saying quick obedience quick obedience that's not impulsiveness when the lord puts on your heart something to do go and do it quickly not when the enemy does but when the lord puts something on your heart Go and do it quickly. You don't need eight trumpet blasts. You need to uh, respond to the heart of the Father for your spouse and do what he is asking you to do. Don't go call your ungodly friends and ask them what they think about it. Don't listen to your own fears. Go to the Word of God. Go to the Spirit of God and do what God is calling you to do. Maybe some of you guys need to make a phone call. Maybe some of you need to forgive somebody. Maybe some of you need to repent. 
and, and to do acts of repentance. It's not enough just to repent sometimes. Some people want to repent and just have the spouse just swallow up everything that happened in the wake of it. Repentance is often not enough when you truly hurt somebody. You gotta change. You gotta do acts that lead to repentance. You gotta work. You gotta earn trust back. Mm -hmm. And that might be you. You might just have forget repented about something. You just want your spouse just to not have any feelings about it anymore. It takes time to earn trust back when it's been broken. And that's just the the wonderful discipline of the Lord. That's just the response that sometimes happens when you've hurt somebody. Pray for your spouse. Stand in the gap for your for your marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, you guys share this, tag some people. Um, I think that this is going to bless people. Maybe even they're not already saved. You know. So I'm just I'm just praying. It's Valentine's week. <laughs> I just pray for some restoration this week in marriages. Amen. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the week that the Lord has made. And God, we just want to see healing. We want to see restoration. We want to see change. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Do not fear. It is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It is his good pleasure to heal, to fix, to renew, to restore. He is bringing kingdom marriages together for kingdom purposes. And I pray that God gives you a vision like you've never had before of everything that he sees that he is calling you to be and calling for your marriage to be. And just to see how when you let him heal you, when you walk through the fire, it's going to be not just for your benefit, not just for your marriage benefit, but it's going to be for the kingdom of God. It's going to be for the purposes of God in our lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.